We should be working and these two are talking about food. All right guys, it's been a little while since we've done a job like this, three years actually, but we have another Audi S5 here at the shop and we're gonna be adding our 10.25 inch Android display. In terms of installation, it's going to be a lot of the same. We do have a few new little tweaks that we've added, so we'll show you how to do those. And the kit is still going to work on the same cars, so it's gonna be all the A4s, A5s, Q5s, and then the S versions of those cars and the RS versions of those cars as well. So before we jump into it, let's have a look at the screen. So first thing we have is the screen itself. That's the 10.25 inch. A lot of people ask me about the 12. The 10 inch is the best size for the car. It looks like an OEM finish. The 12 looks very aftermarket. It's just very big. And then we have a fascia. Now this is for a Q5 and SQ5. So we're gonna take that out and swap it with an A4, A5 fascia, which I'll show you in a second. We have all of the wiring, which we're gonna go through and show you how to install. And we've also added in an external mic. That never used to come in the kits, it does now. Uh, that's optional to install as well. So this is what the fascia for an A4, A5 looks like. And if you have a left-hand drive car, that will be on the other side. So yes, you can do this on a left-hand drive car. Now in the States and the UK, you might find your original fascia, so not this one, the original one, has a hazard light and an airbag plug. When you do the install, what you need to do, take that plug out of the original fascia, plug it in, and then put it behind the dash somewhere. Just tape it up, secure it, leave it there. Plug this into the old cable that was plugged into the plug, and then plug the last one into the new hazard light. And what that's going to do is stop the airbag light coming up and Pre caution notice for anybody doing the install, if you don't have a coating tool, take the negative off the battery because as soon as you unplug that airbag light, the, the um, plug, you will get an airbag code on the dash. So you'll have to go ahead, plug it in and then clear the code. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And before we jump into the install, one more thing. That is the screen itself. Now it looks basically the same as three years ago, but the internals are all different. So instead of running Android 10, it is running Android 12. It has wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. It has a faster Snapdragon processor and the external mic that we added. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. And we do still have the 4G UI, which is the wheel that goes around. Some people might know what I'm talking about where the new screens all have the blocks. We've got the old original OG UI. All right, so when we jump in the car, first thing we wanna do is start our removal process. So you're going to need Audi radio removal keys right here. We're gonna pop them in and that'll just allow this to slide out of the way. You will turn the ignition on and move this out of the way. Otherwise you're gonna get the little scratches which seems like it's already got here from wear and tear. Next up will be the screen. This panel here just pops right out and then the glove box which I'll show you when we get there. When you're prying over here, just be very careful because you'll put pressure on the vents and you're gonna have a bad day if you do that. You don't wanna do that. You're actually better off just using your hands and pulling back and it will just come out like that. So this is what I was talking about with that plug. In Australia, all we have is a hazard light. In the States and the US, you're gonna have a little airbag part here. So all you need to do is from the back, press the little pins and this whole plug will push right out. Make a liar out of me. There we go. So once that's out, using our harness of course, plug it in with the harness and then put it away. So our harness goes into that, there's another male into that, tuck it away. That's it, no airbag lights. All right, next up, screen comes out. We've got four Torx 20s. Okay, so if you follow these around down to the very bottom, these little trim cutouts, you'll see right in the middle there, there's a little cut section for you to just pop a key right in. And same on the other side. There we go. Boom. Okay. So once that's out, just using the little buttons on the very side there, you just press them in and it should, if you're lucky, release your keys. They're not always that easy. Sometimes they're really, really hard. And then the other thing, once you've got all these out, just take note of the plugs that you remove. So most of them are going to be like this, where it's quad lock, fiber optic, screen cable, uh, I think that's for the music interface, and then GPS antenna, and then the little front cable. That's easy, but sometimes there's a digital radio antenna and other things there as well, so just keep an eye on them. Any little things like this, the original rubbers that have been squished, oh, they've been like that for a while, you can tell. 
try and straighten them out unless they've already been destroyed like those ones. But as for center removal, that is it. Once you've got the center out, we're gonna now move on to the glove box. At the very side here, there's a panel. So you just use a plastic tool, get in behind there and pop it out. I'll show you in a sec. It's just that, really nice and easy. One, two, three clips on it and that's it. Pop it out, get it out of the way. And then for the glove box, you have to open it up first. You might have a CD changer here or a pocket or something like that. If you've got a changer, you need to do the same thing, get your keys out and pull it out. Just like that. Now the reason we're pulling it out is because sometimes behind it, there's a hidden screw. So you just want to feel up here and yep, surely enough, there is a hidden screw in there. So we need to get that out. So one screw here, one, two, three here, one right here, and then two underneath. They're all eight mils. And then this whole thing will pop right out. And the last thing I forgot to tell you guys is the AMI. So if it's got AMI, all you need to do is open it and you'll see a little cover here. So just pull the cover from the inside like that and then press this little thing out and the whole AMI will come out. And now glove box is ready to go. Okay, now that we're here, you will begin to see people's good wiring, as you can see. So what we'll probably do here is just uh, zip tie this or get it fixed up somewhere so it's not banging around back there. But anyway, that's a different story. Now that all this is out, we can start fitting our harness. So in here, you're gonna have, now you might get the big plug like this. And if you've seen any other of our videos, you'll know that right behind here, and I'll put a little insert clip, there's the CAN bus junction. This is only for the MMI cars. And what you need to do for Audi Multimedia only is connect to that. So Audi Multimedia only, connect to that. Every other car, symphony, concert, whatever, other radio, you actually pull this climate control out. It just, just pulls right out. I'll just do it to show you guys. Like that. And that is where you do your CAN bus plug. But for the MMI cars, it's here, that red plug. So for, for you guys, get that, chuck it out. And you'll see, this is already pre-connected for you guys. That is the CAN bus plug for the red junction there. So just take out the red, plug it into here, put that in its place. Now what does this do? everything. This basically tells the unit when to turn on or turn off, to show you the reverse camera when you're going to reverse, to work with your steering wheel controls, to work with basically the whole car. The whole car runs from CAN bus and fiber optics, but mainly CAN bus. Um, this basically intercepts the signal, so everything works. So if that is not done right, you will have a lot of issues. AUX connection, just leave it in line, okay? If you ever have issues with sound, you'll probably email me and say, hey, I have an issue with sound, and I'll run you through what to do. But when I say from AMI to uh, quad lock, this is the quad lock, and this is the AUX we're talking about. In 99% of cars, just leave that connected as it is, as it comes, tape it up. In some cases, you'll have to grab the supplied 3.5 extension, plug it in, and run it to the glove box to the AMI cable but that is very rare, okay? Most of the time you just plug that in and it's happy days. So that's basically AUX hardwired through the CAN plug, but sometimes, especially, not MMI cars, mainly the non-MMI cars, the AMI interferes with the signal, sounds like junk. So what do you do? You disconnect that and just run directly to the AMI and it sounds fine. So hopefully that made sense, but anyway. So we'll plug this in and this cable here, we're gonna run behind the dash to the glove box area and then up to the screen. Quad lock is now connected. We've run this behind. Now we're just gonna continue our running up behind the dash over to here. There's plenty of room, so don't worry about that. And look at that, up and through, nice and easy. Have a look at that. Plenty of length, looks nice. We've taped it all up, made it really clean. Next up, you'll have this harness here. So from the original side on this harness, all you need is this little black plug. And that's gonna take the screen signal from here. Very, very important that you connect that. A lot of people forget that, don't know how, so I say it in every video. Make sure you plug that in, and then you can just tape all this up. The other stuff you don't need, unless you're adding the microphone. Tape, 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 tape. And then your USBs, you 
can decide what to do with it. This customer has opted for one in the glove box, one in the center console. So we're just gonna tee them off, run one underneath the center there and run one into the glove box. Now what you have left is the GPS antenna. We wanna put that behind the A pillar. This car's not gonna be fun to do, so I'm not gonna film it, but basically this comes off, mount that on the A pillar and then run it in, or you can put it wherever you want. Wi-Fi antenna, same thing. I'm probably gonna go, you can go behind the screen, but it can get interference. I would say near your knee there on the dash or in somewhere in this area, but basically away from electronics. That's what you want. And then one of the last things is that to get that plugged in. And now we'll go and build the fascia. Oh, I figured out the best way to do this because there's a few different ways you can do it. And the absolute best way that works on every car or every A4, A5 is this. This panel is all kind of one piece except for the very back here. So if you flip her over, you're gonna see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, brrr, all these plastic welds. So you're gonna use a soldering iron if you don't wanna break anything. Melt each weld and pop it out. And that's gonna allow this, just this back section here to come out from behind. And then when you put it back on, it exposes all the screws and everything that we need for the new fascia. So do that. <laughs> undo those welds, pop it off, done. Okay, much easier with the roof down. So we have put this all back together, but we put the GPS antenna behind here and we've run the mic up, which you might be able to see it right there. It's just hiding up there and out of the way. And to get this off, if you want to, you have to take this off. There's screws underneath each side and then this panel can pop off once that moves out of the way. And then wiring comes down. We've taped it all up in there, which you probably can't see. One USB we've got here, which is gonna go into the glove box. The other one we've put in here. Now, a lot of this stuff I don't film too much because you guys can do whatever you want with that stuff, okay? We, I'm just showing you where we do it to keep everything really nice and clean. And then you should have your cables there that we looked at earlier, and that is still out as before, so we can move on to the next step. So from here, what you wanna do is grab the screen and look at where the big plug is and the small plug, and then the 4G and GPS, and then, you wanna grab, so we had the big plug on one side with the 4G antenna, and then the small plug on the other side with the GPS. And then you just wanna make sure that they sit in the right areas for the next part, which will be our new bracket. So the new bracket will go on in the factory spot with the factory mounting hardware, and then our cables will come out of those two holes. So now that we've got our panel in here, we've just used the factory mounting hardware, popped it in, and our new cables are coming out. The panel that we looked at earlier where we removed the insides is literally just gonna clip right into its factory position. Look at that, like I bought one. Now the new fascia is gonna go over the top of this and all the screws will line up and then in your kit, you'll have these nice little baby screws. They're gonna screw into it. Everything's gonna be mounted nicely. Okay, now once that is in, you'll see it's solid and it's not going anywhere. Nice and straight, everything looks beautiful. Hit the hazards, hazards work. It's exactly what we want. Now you can grab the screen from AJ's lap and slide it down, okay? So you wanna plug it in, get your 4G GPS screwed on, and then there's little feet and they just slide on and boom. And then once that's done, put your radio in and start doing some testing. Have a look at that. Oh, have a look at that. And just like that, we are ready to put this thing back together. Go and grab your CD changer, plug everything back in. Don't forget any plugs here, especially the fiber optic on the far left. That's all of your sound. When you start sliding it in, there's another plug at the very front of the unit. Don't forget that one either. Okay, and once that's in, slide it right into place. Glove box is next, so get all your cables run where you need, plug everything in, and then go ahead and screw it all back up with the original screws grab the CD changer, pop it into place, and then the very last panel there, just clean it up, pop it in, chef's kiss. All right, now the screen is in, the very last thing you wanna do is at the top, at the back of the screen, there's two flaps, and just open the flaps up and put the screws in so that this thing is bolted down. But I just wanted to show you some quick settings. So if you go to reverse, you'll find you've got no factory camera. 
if you do have an original camera in the car, you want to go settings, and then you're going to go system, and then you're going to go camera selection, and change it to OEM. Okay, now we go back. Boom, okay, no signal. So why do we have no signal? Okay, so what we did there from the no signal, we actually did that in real time, which is awesome. I just turned the car off, opened the door, closed the door, turn it on again, and now we've got the thing loading up. So because we had all the fiber optic and all that sort of stuff unplugged, it just needed its reset. Now you see here, it's brought us right back into Android automatically. Now we go to reverse and boom, it's gonna show you your factory camera, just like that. The speed of that wasn't very fast, but that's the factory MMI system. That is as fast as it is, that's the way it is because it's an old system. All this is doing is just switching you to the original, that's it. Um, the other thing a lot of people ask about is our old user interface, 1314, and then you're gonna go down to UI, 4G, done. Now once you do that, turn the car off, let it sit for a minute, and I'll show you what it looks like when we come back. While we're waiting for the Android side to reboot, on the original side, we're gonna go here to source, and external audio is gonna be already pre-selected for you. You don't need to plug anything into the AMI. We've added some new coding into the system so that AMI works automatically. So you just hit that, touch the screen, and look at that, our old user interface. And then on this here, you can change that as well. So you're gonna go back into your factory 1314 settings, and then you're gonna go vehicle, yeah, here. So we've got an, a, an S5, but you can do A4, old looks cool, but I'm just gonna do A5, boom, A5 and then you can change that side. So that's all fully customizable for you. If you wanna make sure your CAN bus is all working correctly, one, reverse camera, works, good. Two, dashboard revs, works when I rev the car, perfect. And that is pretty much it. Everything after that, you'll have to go to our other video which is a full review. But all you really wanna do for most people is go to Bluetooth, pair your phone, whether it's Android or Apple, doesn't matter, pair it to that, it'll come up here, and then go phone link. And then you're gonna have wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto on this screen. Works with the touch, and it also works with the original dial, which it's not right now. So that's something that I can look at. Another thing we need to do, one, three, one, four, enter, cam protocol. Let's change that to 3G. That's gonna be why it wasn't working. So now, it's all working. Very, very simple. When you have little things that don't work, it's always something super simple, most of the time. But yeah, that is it guys. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, that's how it's gonna look. If you wanna get out of here, either hit car or just swipe down and hit home. And there it is, that's the screen. Very last thing to do, as I said before, screw it down, take your screen protector off. We're gonna go through and give this car a nice clean down and a wipe down and all that sort of stuff and make sure it's 100%, but that is the job done. There it is guys, 10.25 inch Android display in the Audi S5. If you have any questions about the installation, drop them in the comments below. If you wanna reach out to us, it's www.shoptfb.com. I'm pretty sure I covered everything in this install video, but if there is anything I missed, just let me know in the comments below. This exact screen will be linked, first link in the description. It's the same screen, my same suppliers that we've been using since the very first video three years ago, and it is a fantastic system, and that's pretty much it. Anything else, reach out to us, email there, website's there, everything's there. Thank you all so much for watching. Catch you the next one.